Was uh, Adamski's work uh, related to some of the military findings and the scientific findings? I know you mentioned about Israel, the Israeli government, and some of the information that they revealed recently, uh, or the head of the Defense Department, I believe you spoke about. Maybe you could just elaborate a little bit on how his his work is is hand, goes hand in hand with some of the philosophers and scientists and military findings. Well, yeah, um, that's that's interesting actually because. And that's uh, that's exactly the uh, uh, the angle that I take in my latest book, uh, the Adamski book of uh, UFO UAP disclosure. You know, many people will be aware that uh, disclosure activists uh, since the 1990s have been pressing the U.S. government, especially, uh, but also in the U.K. and elsewhere, to release the information um, that they have about extraterrestrial craft and, and uh, encounters. Um, and these people did a great job in, in keeping the subject of flying saucers or, or UFOs as they were then called uh, in the public, um, yeah, public awareness, um, even though you know, the media, there were hardly any media reporting seriously about it. Um, but um, in, in, my, in my latest book, um, what, I, what I did was um, take the recent confirmations um, and contrast or rather correlate these with uh, the uh, early evidence and answers provided by especially George Adamski and, and the example that you uh, referred to um, uh, concerns uh, the uh, uh, Israeli head or former head of the Israeli space program and also uh, um, yeah, well, he was involved with with uh, the secret uh, secret agency. or no, he a professor of astrophysics, um, and and the head of the space program. Um, he stated in December in an interview in the Jewish in the Israeli press, the Jewish press uh, title of the newspaper, um, in December 2021, that um, extraterrestrials are here but they've asked not to make it public yet um, because humanity is not yet ready. Um, and that of course is quite remarkable to come from such a renowned scientist. And the point I'm making in my book is that not only that Adamski, uh, who was mistaken for a scientist, he never claimed to be a scientist, even though he was an amateur astronomer. And uh, because he, his residence was on Palomar Mountain, where since 1949 the Hale, um, the Hale telescope in the uh, in the uh, Palomar Observatory uh, uh, was uh, had been operating. Um, uh, and people assume, especially journalists, uh, assume that he was a scientist and he was connected with the observatory. But he had his own private observatory, and uh, um, and of course Adamski uh, became known for his claims of not only sighting craft, but also photographing them and, and um, being contacted uh, by occupants, um, which is a very, uh, you know, very interesting um, historical reference to what the Israeli professor said in 2021. But there had been other scientists before Chaim Eshed, the Israeli uh, professor, um, also in recent times, in 2009, for instance, there was this uh, Bulgarian, um, um, he was also an, an, ast an astrophysicist, I believe, or an astronomer, um, 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 Filipov, Lechazar Filipov. Um, my, I, my Hungarian is non-existent, so I'm probably pronouncing his name incorrectly, but Lechazar Filipov said very much the same thing as uh, in 2009, in an interview with the uh, with the uh, Telegraph, the London Telegraph, as uh, Chaim Shed did in 2021, there have been other scientists too um, who uh, who have gone on the record and have then du been duly uh, ridiculed by their you know, academic peers for for speaking out. But it's remarkable, I think, that we now find these voices uh, from the academe from, from scientific circles, uh, stating almost the exact same thing as the contactees and especially George Adamski did in the 1950s. What was some of the specific information that George Adamski received from his contactee? 
hmm, the main the main message that he received uh, was um, that you know we we must remember this was in the 1950s in the midst of the Cold War when the nuclear arsenals were being built like you know like mad both the United States and its allies and the Soviet Union and its satellites were were in a race involved in a race to build the most destructive uh, weapons that they uh, reckoned would deter their their adversaries um, um, from uh, from attacking. Um, and um, it, it was at this time that uh, the, uh, uh, the visitors from space urged the, their contactees, George Adamski first and foremost, but also the others that I mentioned, and, and, and also people in Italy and South America, um, to inform humanity that we were on the path to self-destruction, and it was of the utmost importance to uh, seek international cooperation to bring to an end this weapons race, which of course is a colossal waste of resources. Um, and, um, you know, that if, if we would manage to resolve our differences by you know, meeting at the negotiation table rather than uh, meeting in the battlefield and, and uh, eventually destroying the planet, um, we would, you know, we would uh, face a, a brilliant future. Um, and I think it is not a coincidence, and I was referring to that just a minute ago, that this happened in a time running up to the present time where, according to the Asia's Wisdom teachings, we, um, we should expect uh, the emergence of the teacher, a uh, uh, world teacher for the new age. And it's, it should also be uh, remembered that you know, this, this uh, um, return of a teacher is not an invention of, of Madame Blavatsky or Benjamin Graham or, or anyone in, in New Age circles. It's not something that is necessarily, uh, you know, was first uh, uh, thought up in, in Age's Wisdom teachings. It is um, an integral part of human history. And, and when you look at the, the uh, world religions, you will see that in every major world religion, there's the same expectation of a new teacher who will bring a new revelation about the nature of reality and, and how to reconnect our individual consciousness with the source of consciousness. Yeah, and, and this reconnecting, which we see reflected in the word religare, the original Latin for religion, religare, to reconnect. Um, you know, the, the, the Jews are waiting for the Messiah. The, uh, the Christians are waiting for the second coming. The Buddhists are waiting for the fifth Buddha, Maitreya Buddha. Um, the Hindus are waiting for the 10th incarnation of, uh, of Vishnu, uh, Kali, uh, Kalki avatar. And there's sections in Islam that are waiting for the return of the 12th Mahdi who disappeared or Muntazar. Um, so it's a very universal expectation. Um, of course, the details, the particulars differ, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, the, uh, um, many of these teachings date from before uh, written history. Um, and and um, it's, um, uh, you know, details get in the way, dogma gets in the way. Um, but according to the teachings, which is according to Benjamin Krem, and I believe so myself, um, can be found at the heart of every every religion. You know, religions uh, are built around the teaching that the teacher brings. The teaching is not meant as a religion, and teachers are not meant to be uh, venerated or worshipped. Uh, but that happens over time as a matter of course, so to speak, when you know people begin to organize especially after the teacher disappears, or dies or, or retreats, um, when people start to organize what should be organic. And, and of course, in, in, in the past, uh, people needed leaders and these leaders were all human. So, you know, they did what they thought was best and they set up these dogmas and these structures and etc. So the teachings have been lost sight of 
for you know for the main part but the teaching itself uh, revolves around the the, the new a new revelation about the nature of, of reality and the nature of god so to speak in, in religious terms um and that in order to to actually to really live the teachings uh, we should uh, put them into practice by following the golden rule and this golden rule can also be found in every major world religion treat another the same way you you yourself want to be treated you know it can be found in every every religion um, and this this is another part of the message that the uh, contactees uh, were given in the 1950s you know it's uh, it's a it's a matter of of survival for the human race that we come together, that we seek international cooperation, that we do not blow each other to, to bits and, and we keep the planet intact, that we take care of the planet and take care of each other. 